welcome to Friday's report out. Great to see we've got colleagues joining us and we've got, uh, I think, really interesting report out today. Staffing, planning and resilience, cardiorespiratory team. So warm well, welcome to you, Hannah, Sarah, Baljinda. So whenever you are ready, over to you. Hi there. Um, I just need to pass on Bal's apologies, unfortunately, before I start. The irony of it is that she's um, unable to join us because she's staffing the ward. So oh, God, yes. <laughs> best no intentions, problem. but she couldn't get here. So Sarah and I will try to fill the gap for her. So this is just a really quick update about our Lean for Leaders project that we completed recently. Um, and we decided to focus on staffing planning and resilience within our department. Um, there was, a, there was a few reasons for this. I guess because there was three of us from the department, we wanted to do something that really made an impact because there was three of us who could focus our time and energy on something. And also because I think we all recognise it's becoming more and more challenging every day. And so we just needed to refine the processes that we had in place. Um, so moving on to the first slide, I'll talk you through the problems that we were facing. So this sounds really bad, doesn't it? Time and energy wasted by the cardiology matrons. But what was happening is we've got six wards plus the cath labs plus the day case unit. And each morning, either Helen, the other matron or myself were going around the wards and spending so much time trying to identify information. And we were interrupting clinical time. We couldn't get answers on the phone. We couldn't get information from rosters. And so we'd go around gathering information, then something would change. We'd have to go back to a number of people and update our plans. And it just felt like there was time invested, but for no real outcome. There was also gaps in knowledge of the junior staff because they couldn't see all this going on and conversations in the background. So they didn't always feel that their staffing was being supported. They just saw the outcome of the result. And I guess the other issue was that only one ward would know the outcome and the other wards may have been in a worse position, a best position, better position. And the staff just didn't know what was going on within the department. And so we decided that as, as a group, we should try and bring that together. So the next thing that we did anyway was to map the path that Helen and I took each day. And so this very busy looking diagram is what's known as a spaghetti diagram. And it just follows everything that we did around staffing. And it, it, it tries to demonstrate, it's hard to see, but that's over two floors of Jubilee Wing. And that was 150 minutes of our day every day that we were spending just having these conversations about staffing. And so if we move on to the outcome slide, Jimmy. So our plans from this, we organised a daily staffing meeting at one o'clock and initially that was for the nurse in charge of each ward to attend. We planned the meeting in a designated area, which was on Ward 19, because we felt that was central for all the staff. We took information to that meeting from the 11.30 matron staffing meeting. So sometimes we were going with mitigation. Sometimes we were actually taking our staffing down another level because that's unfortunately what's happening at the moment. We stopped the line and below stop the line nurse staffing. But we were able to communicate that to all of the wards. And so everybody could recognise Everybody had got the best possible staffing we could achieve. People were there to discuss with each other. So if there was two wards in a similar position, there was conversations about, well, I've got X number of X enhanced care, but actually I haven't. So maybe you need that member of staff. And so it, it brought the team together really well because they were having those open conversations that had always been going on. It's just they hadn't been able to see them together before. And then we were able to share that information with the site team as well so that they knew our plans for out of hours and we would leave that meeting with a plan for the next 24 hours aside from last minute sickness and things i'm going to hand over to sarah now thank you so as hannah has pointed out that the amount of time that she um spent in the morning and through the day was about 150 minutes so after this it was all reduced to 95 minutes but the, like Hannah has also pointed out there were things that she had to do so there was the walk around in the morning to make sure everything was okay the half past 11 trust meeting and then going to the three o'clock staffing um the three o'clock staffing the staffing meeting that we chose um it was about 
what the ideal situation for that afternoon was but like Hannah's also pointed out things change at the last minutes so the matrons and the patient flow was alerted to areas struggling with staffing our high acuity problems because on some of the wards you know they might have very easy patients and then as Hannah's also highlighted they might have some um, heavier ones with more demands uh, not always from nursing but from clinical support workers as well um, it just made it raised awareness of the demands between the wards and, and created a much closer, better working relationship. We also upskilled of the junior staff and increased confidence of working within other, other areas within cardiology. So they were sort of taken out of their comfort zones as well. So they weren't just working on their wards. They were working with new staff members and they were working a different kind of cardiology and nursing, which was quite good for them. Um, staff recognition of daily staffing challenges and developed skills of forward planning. Um, I'd had quite a few conversations with a lot of staff members who thought we weren't doing anything about staffing that our wards were always left and other wards were always protected. Taking them to these meetings, they could see what was happening. So as you can see from this spaghetti diagram, this one's a, a lot simplified than the first one. And so it just showed that Hannah and Helen could actually use their time more constructively. So what went well? So staff engagement, they got to all the staff got to meet other people from other wards. It sort of took away the um, whole my ward's busier than your ward. Um, and people were able to see that other wards have different types of busyness. So it was it, it led to good working uh, team working. Uh, the relationships between the different cardiology wards, I think it's usually led from the top down. So the matron's been there, the band seven's been there. And then the different junior staff, they could see that we all worked well to support each other. And I think that's been a knock on effect that we don't want to see one of our wards struggling if we can help them. So what would we do differently? Everything's really good on reflection. But when you look back, we after four weeks, we looked back on it and reviewed it. So at first we chose a one o'clock time to meet. But it, with people swapping from shifts, handovers, daily tablets and things like that, it was made it was made to uh, be changed to three o'clock because that worked out better for all the, the wards and the, the staffing people to turn up. Um, the updated staffing review, we included supernumerary staff and students and like RNs that are waiting pins um, to identify mitigation. Because before we were finding out when we were going in that we had so many RGN nurses and so many CSW nurses and some of the wards that were falling below to stop the line, we could actually mitigate with some of these uh, other members of staff. So we use them questions. That was handy. <laughs> but basically, just um, just to go back over it all with us doing this at first, it was we all had to ring the matron if we could get hold of her or she could get hold of us just to go and find out the staff like somebody had phoned in sick. This has just been an all round really good project to do because people that thought we weren't doing anything for staffing actually see now that, you know, we are doing something that we're implement implementing the change. The patient flow coordinators are more involved with the staff as well. And so they, they're more than just a patient flow coordinator, they become a person on the ward as well that we can go to. So the teamwork from it all has worked really well. And I think in cardiology, we've done this well. Everybody knows what we're doing. The staff feel like they're being supported. They might not like the changes and they might not like moving to the wards, but they appreciate each other. And I think that's really helped in the teamwork as well. So, yeah, any Great. questions now? <laughs> Excellent. I love that spaghetti diagram, Sarah. That's that's great. really good to see. Thanks, Hannah, Sarah. Excellent. Um, I, just can I just say I'm really really um, encouraged and enthused to see the work you've done because using the method on some of you know our toughest challenges like staffing shows how it can really sort of help in a really practical way and um, it's really good listening to how it's how it's uh, how it's working so thank you um, let's let's take some questions comments from colleagues that are uh, have heard you describe it. Um, Claire. Thank you. I'm sorry I came in a little bit late so I only caught the last few slides but I think I've got I think I've got the general gist, gist of it. Um, I suppose what I'm keen to understand is um, from the teams that participated or the individuals that participated in this can they see have they been able to describe where they think you could apply it to some to other places and, and is it do you feel as though they've got the right access to the support and training that might be needed in order to be able to just let them 
that that's our Think next steps right. really Claire we, we started with the more senior nurses with nurses in charge and then they would go back and and feedback to their wards but now what we're doing is I think we all recognize we have a relatively junior RN workforce and so we're now trying to bring them in as, as just as as part of their their daily business almost so that everybody has insight into those conversations that support that we're offering that recognition of the the bigger picture um because obviously whilst we're talking about cardiology and cardiac surgery we're feeding back the information from the 11 30 trust staffing meeting and so some of those difficult conversations about actually we are taking you below stuff stop the line tonight but again that explanation about why why that's needed and so i think that's the gap that we had before that that information wasn't wasn't filtering out to everybody and I'm hoping that's what we've we've filled and that's certainly the feedback from the staff is that they now have that appreciation that whilst we can't always solve everything they, they recognize that we're doing as much as we can so for me that that was the, the biggest thing to come out of this. It just goes to show doesn't it that you just you can't communicate too much really with on stuff like this and, and however when you work in these really busy jobs like yourself Sarah and I mean you know that sometimes you're just pedaling to keep up, aren't you? And actually, sometimes it's you, you can make further track, get further traction, move further forward just by well, not just it's never there's never just is there, but it's it by including and um, the people that are doing the doing the work and who it's impacting on to be able to be directly in, in, involved. I think it's really good. Yeah, because it's, it's very easy in my position to. I forget that the staff on wards can't see the rosters, they don't know about all the sickness, they don't know what's going on trust-wide because it's just my daily business and yeah. it's so important that they know that as well. Yeah. I think it's also just to, to back up what Hannah said, it's also really good for the, the junior nurses. Like Hannah tells us what we need to do, but actually when we have to tell our staff that they have to move, it's good for them to actually go and see the process of it and the reasons why. So they can say we're moving because there's one nurse with all of these patients, we can't leave her like that. And so it sort of it it just makes people think about other things more than just themselves and the ward. So it, it just upskills them in massive ways. Yeah, that's really good. Um, thank you. Thanks, Claire. Just checking any other uh, questions, Tony. Yeah, I thought it thought it was really good, really interesting report. Thanks, both of you. Um, just just a, a very brief comment. Recent research published in August this year um, indicates that organisations which are good at creating value in the new way uh, demonstrate seven key characteristics. And you, you're actually banging one of them with this. So I just want to share it with you. Organisations that do create value in that new way are good at reinventing the social contract with their people. And that's what you were doing. You were reinventing the social contract with your people. You were adopting a leadership model which transforms collaboration into companionship. So, I, you know, I think you're really banging that. So, Very that's interesting. With it. Thank you. Thank you. I would disagree <laughs> with that, Tony. I think that's a really good way of putting it. Yeah. So, Hannah, Sarah, can I ask you, perhaps just on that point, how are your team sort of feeling about it and the kind of response and the engagement you've you've you feel you've had? I think it's been very positive hasn't it Sarah uh, yeah. from the staff I mean we don't have the answers to everything and I can't pretend that we do we all know how challenging it is at the moment and yeah you know but I think all we can do is keep talking to them and it's certainly the, the communication between the teams you can see that's changing and that information is spreading and I, I think that's all we can keep doing. Yeah. And the reality of it is no, nobody likes moving from their ward at all. But now they have an understanding of why they're doing it. And, the, and it, it takes it a little bit easier when you know that you're supporting somebody else and the reasons behind it before they were just being <clears> asked <throat> to move and they didn't know their reasoning behind it. So it, it's given them the confidence and also to ask the reasons why as well. Yeah. Um, it's that walk in their shoes, isn't it? As, as yeah. soon as we say that ward has no nurses, one nurse, that, that always changes. Yeah. Yeah, the response yeah. to to moving so or absolutely. at least recognizing why they're not getting additional help so absolutely yeah and it also manages in some of the cases it manages to upskill them because when they're on your ward you only look after a certain kind of uh, patient moving to a different ward it gives you different experiences and it gives you different skills to learn as well so actually it's good for their training and development as well yeah yeah that's great um jimmy 
Thanks both. Uh, really interesting presentation. Just going to acknowledge that um, both Sarah and Hannah came as a as a team alongside Val, who couldn't join to the, the kind of uh, revised uh, intermediate lead improvement method training that started August time, was it? That you started so they've done the three day new new course and just to acknowledge that given the pressures uh, that are out there they've taken this through and really i think what i wanted to comment was we see the benefit of sort of bringing a team to training so they've had each other for support they've had each other to to get going with it so as well as the fantastic work they've clearly delivered i think there's something for us to and we are encouraging that with the training so for those taking this away and encouraging their teams to participate come together have an idea that you want to work on it and then we'll help you with those tools that might make take that forward um so yeah well done uh, and we did throw out the invitation to complete the course. We wanted to hear from these guys in a report out scenario. So congratulations. I think we can officially say that you've completed that based on the great work we've heard today. So thanks. Absolutely, Jimmy. Well said, without a doubt, really excellent. Uh, that's that's a real, I think, a real achievement for you both. And uh, and please pass on my thanks to Bal, won't you? Because, uh, great that you've been working together as a team on this fantastic well that's been great really good thank you everyone and particularly obviously hannah sarah and val even though she's not with us and thanks jimmy <coughs> for all the input on this great work really important really good to see the impact it's having tackling what we know is one of our big challenges and um keep us updated on how it's going guys that'll be great Thanks very much, everyone. End of report out.